Hello, we play viewers. Here we are again. It's that time of the year. Time to go through New York Harbor. And so we get a little bit of a view of the airport. And you can tell there's uh, things aren't normal because usually at this time of the day there's. Hello, hello, good morning. Usually at this airport there's a lot of airplanes landing first thing in the morning or taking off. And so far I've only seen one. Hi, Roddy. Good morning to you. So it's a little unusual that I have a, a cloudy day, so you get to see a, a, a south view. Hello from Scotland. Hope it's all. Uh, I hope you're not having a rainy day in Scotland today. Everything's lovely over there. So you get a bit of a south view without the glare of the sun. It's uh, highly unusual that I go through here when the sun isn't shining, but, but we have a lot of clouds today and some rain might be coming along and I better pay attention over on this side so I don't hit something so this is what everybody likes to see is there's no not the maintenance depot but the prison ship is, is coming up in about uh, four or five minutes and in a moment I'll have to check my course uh, right here in front of me where am I at? <laughs> I'm, uh, let's see if I can show you a better view. Off in the distance is New York City. So I'm in the, uh, I just came out of Western Long Island Sound and I'm headed west and then south past the uh, city through the East River. Well, the trip's been pretty good. Uh, my first day was rough because I went and did a long one and I wasn't, my body wasn't up to it. But I'm, I've gotten in shape by bouncing around in the waves. And the last couple of days were, were behind Long Island Sound, so so conditions were pleasant, except it was the weekend, and and oh my goodness, there were just too many motorboats, and I just got you know I got I got waked, as they as I would call it. There's so many motorboats always going by. There's always some waves, so I was very happy to stop yesterday, only to find out that the. Tramp flag on the back. Uh, no, there's no tramp flag on the back. There's also no Kumo flag, and there's also no. Well, here you can answer the question yourself. There's no flag at all on the back. This is the view of the stern. So I'll be getting to New Jersey, but not anytime soon. It's a long period of south winds and heavy rains and nasty weather and, and big seas. So that uh, that next section is going to uh, maybe be later in the week. Now I've just passed a waypoint. Oh, oh get here. Just passed a waypoint. Yes, we are stopping Atlantic City. So let me make a course change of 12 degrees first. Now I'm on course, so I will stop in Atlantic City, but that's a ways down the street. Hi, Greg. The Fed pen and tip. Well, here's a, uh, so this, this is some kind of an old storage thing for like salt or something. But here's what we all come to see. It's a fairly unique uh, structure. I, I call it the prison ship. It's actually technically a prison barge because it's not self-propelled. And I've never seen, there's an exercise never seen anybody exercising and I've gone past all times of the day so I'm not sure if that exercise area ever gets gets used or, or what um, I, I go past at this time of the year and also in the spring when it's not too hot and it's not too cold um, I kind of wonder what the bottom looks like is it you know unless they have unless they hire divers every so often the bottom must be completely full of of barnacles and, and muscles. Um, the, the growth, the growth must be tremendous, and I, I can't. Uh, Rikers Island. Uh, somebody help me out with my geography. This, this is not an island, but over here, here's 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 an airport in the distance. I, I have zero knowledge of the geography of <laughs> New York City, 
so usually somebody comes on and, uh, and does a good job of explaining. But Rikers Island is somewhere around here. Um, I think it might be a little farther ahead. This prison ship uh, doesn't look like it's LaGuardia. Thank you. See, thank you. You're, you're, you're my, uh, you're my, uh, uh, you can advise everybody on what we're looking at. Um, so this prison ship has not, has not been painted. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday, bad weather, lots of rain. Um, I might be able to go somewhere on Thursday. I, I don't, I'm not bothered so much by the rain as I'm just by the bad winds. I have, I have this enclosed that I can kind of hide under, but obviously I prefer to not have. Okay, well, then there you go. Answer your own question. Uh, I hope you're not, I hope you're not familiar with the inside of this prison ship. Let me, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take a second, let me check my course. 290, uh, I'm a little high on my track. I can turn left just a day. One, two, uh, the autopilot's on, so that's how I'm able to give you a, a side view. But I do have to pay attention in case anybody's coming. There's nobody behind me. Oop, my cord's getting tangled up. Somewhere in the distance back there is another sailboat, and I don't see them. So, farewell to the prison ship. And here we are, like I said at the end, the, the, the exercise area. It's all caged in. And for the first time, I see people exercising. Let's see if I can zoom. There's people out there. It looks like they're playing basketball. Well, that's a first. This is something probably never seen on Periscope before. The prisoners of the prison ship playing basketball. So, so now we know their schedule. The exercise schedule. Yard time, yep, yard time. So now I have to pay attention over here and make sure I hit the, uh, the channel markers. So I don't know what this is on this side. It's all a big mystery. There's a power station up ahead, I know that much. Check my course. 283, I'm off by 2. 286, thank you. Good morning, Paul. I hope everything's fine with you down in Florida. I, I assume you're in Florida. Note the Statue of Liberty is, is a considerable distance ahead. Uh, this whole passage takes uh, probably two hours to go through. Oh, by the way, my speed's only 6.4 knots, and I motor at 6.4 knots, so I'm having zero help from the current. If someone could give me a time check, the, uh, the current is supposed to turn at Hell's Gate at 8.30. So I'm just, uh, well I'm not exactly early, I'm, I'm making okay progress, but I'm not getting any help either. And as, as the morning goes on, I'll, uh, I'll speed up. So that's why there's the, the boat behind me, because they left at about the same time I did to catch the, the first of the ebb. And there are a couple boats coming the other way. 30, it's, is it 8 o'clock? Is that all the time is? No, it's 9 o'clock. Check, check your watch. Um, so here, here's some things come around the corner. There's a, there's a blue boat. So I do have a new propeller. And the only thing wrong with the old propeller was it had moving parts. And anything with moving parts can, can fail and you do not want your propeller to fail. So now I have a, a new propeller made out of a solid piece of brass. Or I guess this is a solid piece of bronze. So this propeller has, has no moving parts. They will not fail. And the downside is it uh, doesn't do a good job in reverse like the other one did. But, but that's, uh, that's the case with all, uh, all regular propellers. Um, reverse isn't as effective as forward. So, so yeah, it's, it's doing a good job. I'm at my normal speed. It took uh, two tries, two different propellers to get the right one. And then the second one had to go back for, uh, for adjustment. It was, uh, it, the angle of the blades was too, too much, so it had to go back to have the angle reduced. And they can do that to a certain degree in the propeller shop. They can use some. Uh, yeah, it's it's 15 inches in diameter and 
I believe it's 10 inches in pitch. Um, my own propeller, I gotta be a little careful here, they don't really hit the damn buoy. My own propeller was 17 inches in diameter, and I think, because it's not stamped, it was an adjustable propeller. Um, I don't know what the damage was, I haven't got my bill yet. Uh, this is a strange little ferry. It looks like it can take wheelchairs. Maybe you know what that is. It's, it's not exactly a ferry. It's just that it has two ramps at the end. You never know what you're going to see in New York. So my speed was 6.5. No, that's that, that is definitely not a type of, That's some kind of thing that, that docks and, and takes things on and off. Um, so my speed was 6.4, and now it shot up to 7.3. So I'm in the grip, and I like going through here. I'm in the grip of the current. And sometimes when it's fierce, yes, the uh, uh, Roddy, the way you the way you get a correctly, yes, about myself, the, Roddy, the way you get a propeller. Uh, let me get off the autopilot. I got to make a sharp turn here. Um, the way you the way you set a propeller is you want your engine to run at wide open throttle at its specified value the manufacturer has set. So um, if your propeller is, is, is pitched too low, then the engine runs too fast, and if the propeller is pitched too high, then it's, it's lugging and it runs too slow. And maybe I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, but a lot of people think they're uh, Let's go back to the autopilot machine. A lot of people think they're getting a, a bargain by over pitching the propeller so the engine runs slow and the boat, the boat goes just as fast, except now you're hurting the engine by putting extra load on it and, and the cylinders coke up and things aren't good in the long run. So, and, and you, don't, you don't really use any more fuel. Um, yeah, too much restriction. So over on this side, and there's a lot of trees now, is, uh, no, we're not going to get a glimpse of it yet. This used to be the, uh, the corn, one of the quarantine islands, and I think it was a, a mental institution, but we'll probably get a glimpse. Uh, well, yeah, Roddy, some of the, uh, you can also change the gearbox in the transmission, but, but, but just, just set the propeller to the right pitch and let it be what it is. So we're going to get a little glimpse of the old mental institution, or, or whatever it used to be. Um, this island's closed now. I heard there was, there was some talk of opening it up, or I'm not sure what, but maybe someone who's local to New York did that. You might also hear a lot of radio chatter in the background. I have my radio scanning two, I have my radio scanning three channels. And one of them is the one that uh, the tugboats and, and what have you ships make announcements on. Uh, actually, two of them are. Uh, at this point, I don't have much worry about anyone, but farther ahead, once I get uh, get more into the harbor, it's good to have some awareness of, of what might be coming. Yep, a lot of talk. Um, a lot of the places they're talking about, I don't know where they are, so so it doesn't help me. But if uh, one thing is, if the signal is weak and, and breaking up. That they're not nearby, so that's always a, a clue. But I'm, I'm scanning a little bit in advance. This section does have some some traffic, uh, but the East River is, is pretty much, you know, you're not, you're not going really well. You're either going west or you're going east. So it's fairly obvious if somebody's coming. Uh, once you get down toward New York Harbor, the ferries come out of docks. Uh, tugboats are getting cutting through the, uh, the moored barges and moored anchors, moored uh, 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 headboats and barges. And here's an unusual sight. This looks like a Maine lobster boat, but it's not, because we're not in Maine. The reason I can tell is, is they have some kind of a, a hose over the side. So that says they have a, a saltwater pump. 
Oh, did we see the, uh, did, uh, we didn't really see it. It's tucked in the trees. There's so many trees now. You're not going to see it. The old building. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of, I have to pay attention in this section. There's a lot of distraction. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice boat. I have to make a course change. So my autopilot, I can hold the button and get 10 degrees in, in left or right, port or starboard. Or I can push it one by one by one. So I just gave it 10 degrees, and now I can stand again another four, two, three, four. How's my speed doing? Speed 7.1, it's one and a half miles to the east to the Hell's Gate. And normally I go through here when the current is, oh my goodness, this wind is, is too much. Normally I go through here when the current is, is much stronger. And, and those, those buoys we just saw, those green buoys are leaning over on the side because the current has, is pushing them. So here we are coming up to the, uh, the electrical plant. A little more course change. Breathe public meeting. I see there's a, a fast ferry coming, but it's not going fast. Uh, a few years ago, New York added a whole bunch of, of fast ferry stocks, and of course the fast ferries to go with them. Check back, the fishing boat's not coming toward me, there's nobody, nobody behind. There is a sailboat somewhere behind me. But they were, apparently they were going slower than I was, so they might be saving their engine. I'm looking to my left so I don't hit the buoy, I'm giving you a little view. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of the nicer parts of the whole trip. It, it's, it would take it would take quite a win for it to get rough. Uh, usually I usually I break up going through here to several scopes. And my last one, you might see it getting choppy. The uh, waves really can't build up in here. Uh, it does get rough when the current's running fast. And if the current hits the wind or a tugboat or a barge goes by, then uh, then it gets rough. And I've, in my other boat, I've had water over the bow. How fast am I going? I love that question. Six and a half. I've slowed down. So that's okay. I'll, I'll speed up in a minute. Am I up sail? No, no. This is a the prison ship. You'll have to uh, once this scope is over. The prison ship is is behind. We already we already did the prison ship. It's back there somewhere, right around the corner. So here's a fast ferry, not not going extremely fast. And I lost my train of thought. Checking the buoys. Here's the view I'm, I'm looking at. So it does get rough in here, but I've never seen it rough from just the wind. It's usually rough from the current and boats. And it's not just tugboats and, and barges. Good. I hope you never are on a prison ship. <laughs> right? Um, and also, you get sometimes you get large yachts and fast motorboats going by and they don't care what, what they do. If they knock you silly, what do they care? They've already gone by. So that's happened to me a few times. Why do they need a prison ship? Because apparently it was cheaper to to convert a prison ship into a prison than it was to build a new prison in where are you gonna build a prison in New York? And real estate is not plentiful. And and who wants a prison near their house? So, so where are you going to put a prison? So it's, it's very more convenient just to, uh, to put that prison ship in. Now it doesn't seem to be, uh, it's not a very, it's not a gigantic ship. So it doesn't have like, like thousands of people, but you know, it, every little bit help, helps I guess. And, and I don't know the details of who's in that, that prison ship. It might be people there for, for shorter periods of time. So here we are going past uh, Past the power stations. I say that I'm saying that full because this looks like a gas-fired one here, and I don't know if this is gas or oil fired up here. And I can change course a little bit better. I'm not heading towards the green buoy enough. 
Well, yes, Roddy. Uh, but I think I think there's already plenty of bodies that have been found floating in, in the East River that we don't need anymore. And we'll look for a change. And some of them are probably still wearing their cement cement shoes too, right? Let's take a look over this way. I always like to. This is a place. Just going through here, I like to scan. You never want to uh, to be surprised by some some commercial vessel coming up. And some of them go fast. You saw that. Uh, you saw that fast ferry shoot by. So so fast ferries can come along pretty quickly. That's right, fish and crash, Roddy. Roddy, are you going to be a uh, are you going to be a comic some sometime? So I look for you on Saturday night at the comic stand-up comedy show. So here's buoy number 13, and you can see just a tiny bit of current swirling past the, the bottom of it. And I think I need a drink of water because my voice is giving out. So my speed is 7.5, normally at 6.5, so I'm getting a bit of help looking for four or five degrees to the left. I'm getting a bit of a one knot of current help. Uh, up ahead is Hell's Gate and it can be very turbulent when the current's running and there's a wind against it. I do enjoy going through at uh, a full blast. It's not often. Make a submarine a prison ship. Well, that's possible, but it'd be an awfully expensive way of, of conducting business. Uh, and who, who's going to operate the submarine? Uh, oddly enough, where I'm going to end up today is behind Coney Island and, and decades ago somebody decided they wanted to salvage the gold from a shipwreck off of Cape Cod and they built, a, they, they literally built a yellow submarine and you can go to Google and you can look up yellow submarine Coney Island and see all about it. Uh, the submarine never was successful, it, it, it weighed too much when they were putting it in so he took out some of the ballast and it tipped over and, and water got in and he fixed it and and then nothing ever nothing ever happened after that. And it never really got used for what it was made. And then, then it broke free of its mooring, washed up, and it's now a wreck behind Coney Island. Uh, you never know, odd things that people do. Alright, looking back, I think there's a ship a barge that's tied up. This is the scenic, one of the scenic sewer plants. And uh, who, who, is, who is that person? I don't know. Like I said, I'm very ignorant about uh, what's going on in New York. So I, I do know this is the uh, one of the sewer plants. And this ship with the red stripe on top and the one behind it, they uh, they take on, on sludge and then go a distance out to sea and discharge it because that's the cheaper way, you know, instead of trucking it to a landfill and there'd be a lot of sludge from the sewer plant if you were trucking it to a landfill. So it's cheaper to, to have several boats in, in operation getting pump full of sludge and going out to sea and pumping it out again into the ocean. Not my idea of a fun job. <laughs> if there was ever a, ever a leak, it would stick. So here we are coming up to Hell's Gate. When there, where there's, oh, this wind. I hope, I hope my microphone's doing a good job. I have it tucked underneath my jacket. I hope this wind noise isn't too much. This side's a little better. So I'm going to come up to Hell's Gate, and this is where um, where three three rivers kind of come co-mingle. So it's uh, Brooklyn. Uh, what's Paul? Paul, what's behind? Where, where's Coney Island? Where, where, I don't know where Queens and Brooklyn is. I guess that's where's, where's wherever Coney Island is. Um, that's almost always my stop. I don't think I've stopped anywhere else other than Coney Island in a very long time. 
the alternatives are, are not nearly as nice. Um, I can do a little bit. Two, three, four, five, six. Six degrees. Um, so I keep me to the right as you're supposed to. But I also like to keep I also like to go in as straight a line as possible. And this is why I like to look back. Right past red hook. Yeah, I'm going past red hook. We'll 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 see red hook. I'll probably be past there in an hour or so. So that's why I take a few pauses because I need to I need to get a drink of water between and I think I think that barge is behind me is actually underway. So this is where I need to No no <laughs> there's uh, I don't think there's any no wake zone anywhere in New York. So people just go blasting along. And and you might as well. This this is all uh, all walled up. Uh, Paul is a south wind, I can't make Manus Point. I'm not going to get into that situation. It's not worth the trouble. So I'm going to consult my uh, my tablet. If it's very humid today, so the touch screen isn't uh, isn't isn't working too well. And do I see? Yeah, I think I see a tugboat behind me that's gotten underway. There's also somebody coming in the other direction. Um, my boat is 34 feet. Uh, yeah, there is somebody coming in the other direction. How about that? This is why you have to pay attention on both sides because things float around in the water too. So this is one of those yachts that, that if it was going faster would, would give me a kapow. So I'm going to turn to the right just a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this, this yacht doesn't care what the current's doing. If it's running one knot against it, no big deal. It has plenty of engine power. And there's definitely that, you can see a little speck. There's that tug and a barge behind me. And they're most likely going faster than I am. And you can see the humidity is messing up my, my screen. It's taking touches when I didn't ask it to, on purpose at least. All right. To, on the right side is my autopilot control, so that's why I'm standing over here more than the other side. Here comes that yacht. And it's nice that they're not uh, not going at some huge, huge speed. Oh, they're 10 degrees to the right, please. They're here. There's a few million right there. That yacht has all the amenities. And anyone that's astute, the flag on the stern is for a foreign country. Oh, here we go. Here's some fun. Get ready. Hold on tight. Will I take water over the bow? One. Oh, get behind the screen. Let's see. Oh, got a face full of salt. And I took water over the bow. And so, not much. And some of the mud from the anchor system is, is washing back. So, time to make another course change. Let's see what my speed's doing. 8.2. If I thought that that wake was going to be bad, this is a heavy boat. So to slow it down takes takes a bit of time. Even if I went and cut, cut the engine. It just was coasting. Um, so, so that wasn't so bad. But you can see this side is full of full of mud. I need really need to get the bucket and scrub. And here's a motorboat coming up. There's uh, there's two sides of Roosevelt Island, and usually people come up the other side. But here's a motorboat coming up the side almost that doesn't get used much. There's a low bridge, so sailboats normally would not go down that way. 
I have gone down that way a few times. The, uh, the site I'm about to go to is sometimes closed when the United Nations is opening and you get diverted down the side that has the low bridge. So I've been through there a couple times. I don't like going through, and, and also the, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, also the United Nations opening will close the entire river when, when it's, uh, when heads of state are present. I know of two people that have gone to the wrong side, the side of the, the low bridge. One of them, he hit the bridge with his mast and snapped it up into two or three pieces. And the other person was, was a little luckier. They hit the bridge and and kind of let, got leaning sideways and, and went under with their mask going ding, 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 ding. Like, folks, you've got to you've got to look up. You know, how can how can you not see a low bridge, right? All right, let's turn to the left. One, two, three. 30 degrees. Oh, we're going to get some more wave action. Everybody's dressed in, in blue shirts over there, so that's the hit hired help. This one wasn't as, uh, as vigorous as the other, the other boat. Oh, look out for the spray. Go to 10 degrees. And then we'll be going straight for a bit. And here's a seaplane that, uh, Paul, you know New York more than I do. Here's a seaplane. He's headed downwind, so either he just took off and turned, or he's going to turn around and land. Here's how you can go over to the Hudson by the back road. And there's a pedestrian footbridge there that lifts up. All right, I'm going to scope out and come right back. I need to get a little break and a drink of water and see what's what on the uh, on the boats. So, see you in a few minutes, everybody. Hang in there. This is just a short interruption, and we'll be right back with part two. Can we play viewers? As it often is often the case, Periscope froze up on me. I took some precautions this morning and restarted my phone, but apparently that wasn't enough. And let's see if anybody comes in. I had a little trouble with my signal just now too. So let's see if anybody comes in. Yep, there's somebody who's coming in. So coming up on the, uh, on the Brooklyn Bridge. And in the distance is the Statue of Liberty in the haze. I, I did enjoy this, this brief pause after my, my scope froze up. I was able to check. And there's a big bunch of cranes and stuff, and I don't know what they're doing there. But I don't think they're moving. Um, all right, the ferry's going to do a little dance with me. I'm going to go over that side. I'm going to turn left more. So I'm not going to turn left in front of a ferry. Let them speed along for a second. Right now I'm going right down the center. And I want to get over to the left. And then of course, there's also behind me, my old buddy, the, the fuel barge and tugboat, which is catching up. I did go a little shorter distance. It's asking for 10 degrees to the left. There's a sign up here on the Brooklyn Bridge, keep, keep away so many feet from the fender system. So a little rougher in here, there's more, more boats churning up the water. So up ahead is, uh, well I don't know if it is there anymore, I think it might be gone, it used to be a floating restaurant. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a train going overhead. Yeah, 
here. I, I do have to pay attention though on this side. So I'm making I'm making more of a left turn in just a second. Oh, there's a weird smell. You know, too bad there's no smell o vision here. It's a weird smell. Industrial process. So I'm on the left and safe from that barge and tugboat that's been overtaking me the last uh, hour or so. That's one plus of running near the edge is, is you're not going to be in the middle of traffic unless it's pulling out. Yep, so the, uh, the floating restaurant is still here. We might see if it's open or not. And this is also a ferry slip. We'll turn it off a little more. There's no ferry in it, so no ferry seems to be coming. And my head is up. There is a ferry coming. Hopefully not to this ferry dock. Going across to the other side. And now we can run along the edge of these uh, these old old wharves. And it's rough here now. The waves are building up. So there's a floating restaurant. Looking a little uh, disheveled. I'm more or less on the course I want to be on, right along the edge here. I'll give you a view of Manhattan in a second. Just to make sure it's, it's safe. I'm going this way. Alright, we're good on that side. Let's look at this side. This is what everybody wants to see. There's, a, there's an old, uh, you know, an old ship museum in front of me. You can see a couple tall uh, ships on permanent display, and then whatever else there is. So, no need for narr narration. The the view speaks for itself. There's a little fast ferry going on. something might be coming out from the side. So I can't afford to be, be sightseeing on that direction. You can look. But I have to keep my eye on the left too. Hello, hello, good morning. Here's a view back. I was good at it. Check back. Here's the, the fuel barge, a light, a light fuel barge and a tug. I'm, uh, I'm okay, just uh, just enjoying the, the view through here. It's, today's a short day. Because I don't think it's, I think it's going to be too much wind to keep on going. I've had, I've had trouble, lots of trouble in the past trying to go south along New Jersey when the wind is from the south. It's just, just not, not a good time. So, quick look over in this direction. This is why you always have to pay attention because there's always a chance like this barge could be, 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 be pulled out. Um, so the, uh, the next one, these also, years ago, you can see the, the, the supports. These all used to be warehouses ages ago. And, and so they would come alongside and unload into the warehouse or, or load from the warehouse. And then all that fell fell down. I mean, didn't fall down, but became disused. And some of them have been converted to parks. This one has trees and landscaping. Uh, someone's gone spent a lot of money on uh, 
from building a marina in here and if you want to spend the night it's like four dollars a foot very expensive uh, what they finally did is you can see this this thing they had to build to keep the waves from getting in this massive massive construction of heavy heavy pipes and, and metal decking and that's to keep the waves they used to have something much flimsier and, and it didn't even last the winter it was it was smashed up into pieces pretty quickly let's take a look at manhattan while we still can there's a boat going by oddly enough called the manhattan there's a tugboat headed right at me but i'm good i think this is this is where I have to pay a lot more attention because these boats will come from from multiple directions. And we don't want to have a collision. So you can see Manhattan, I'm gonna watch the tech boat. Hang on. The way some wave action. Alright. It's never a good idea to pass too close in front of, uh, in front of something that's, that's heavy. We write that down for a quiz. That's, that's, the, that's your first rule of navigation. So he's passing behind me. And here's something cool. Here's another tall ship. Well, not really tall, tall, but, but an interesting, uh, interesting looking schooner tied up with, uh, with no sails bent on. So there must be a must be a story there to what it's it's doing there. That's that's not really a dock. They've, they've kind of I guess no I guess it is. They they've made a dock. So so my guess is it's probably an excursion boat without any sails on. They might not be running. No excursion this, this summer. So say because uh, I have this canvas. We had to show Manhattan. Give you a little view there. And let's see what my GPS says. I'm a, a mile from the, the old Snapple factory, and I'll be scoping out at that point once we get around around there. Because then I start to get farther from shore, and I'm going to try to call somebody who who makes YouTube videos. I'm going to try to call him on the radio. So, here's the, uh, the fuel barge and tug. <laughs> and I'm going to say, oh no. It looks like we're going in the same direction. Which I was hoping would not be the case. So I need to go a little more to the right. This white thing is a gigantic air shaft for a tunnel that goes underneath here. Yeah, he's coming right at me. So I think the scope might be over in just a second. I've got to call him on the radio. Let's see what's going on. Okay, folks, premature end of scope. I gotta call that, call that tug button radio and see, see what he wants me to do. So, thanks for watching again, and we'll catch you later.